Welcome to episode 109 of Brain Thunder. We're very excited to have a very special guest with us here today. Martha, can you please introduce her? Sure. With us today, we have Cher Zay, who is the founder of Rhythmia Breath, a wellness program geared towards rehabilitation and prevention of cardiovascular disease as well as mental wellness. As a coach and as a therapist, Sherazade has helped myriads of people from entrepreneurs and executives to celebrities in the TV, fashion and music industry, all the way to people in hospitals suffering from long-term medical conditions. Sherazade, we're so happy to have you here with us today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So let's kick off today's episode by talking about the stigma that surrounds mental health. In my eyes, mental health is a spectrum. So in the same way that you can't say that I'm 100% physically healthy versus I have a fatal disease, there has to be something in the middle. I find mental health to be very similar. However, people keep forgetting that the brain also is part of the body and there's a lot of stigma that surrounds it and people feel very um, reluctant to, to bring this topic up into conversation. Why do you think there's such a you know, d disconcerting um, gap between physical and mental health? Yeah, so you're absolutely right. That was a brilliant introduction around the topic of mental health. And there's so much to say around the topic. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most important things uh, when we talk about mental health is not only, as you said, to look at the physical body, right? To look, to see, you know, how healthy we are in, in, in terms of our blood test or, or mm -hmm. you know, our weight mm -hmm. or, you know. Uh, so it's also the, the health of our mind, right, that we tend to forget. And bringing this to an alignment is incredibly challenging, especially nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. um, I face every day in my practice, I face um, clients coming and saying, you know, I really don't know what's going on in my life. Uh, I exercise, I eat really healthy, I have organic foods every day, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I have a really good life, but I just feel really sad and I'm depressed and I just, I'm not, you know, willing to do anything with my life. So that is our mental health, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's a huge, it's, it's a very, very important topic trying to differentiate that not only by being you know, physically, uh, physically mm -hmm. um, fit, it means that our mental health mm -hmm. is also a uh, fit. Mm -hmm. Do you find that people identify the problem more easily now when there's something going wrong? Certainly, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to see that in, in the last maybe 10 years or even less than 10 years, right? People are much more open to talk about their problems and their insecurities and what's going on. But also, there's a very important thing here, is years ago, 50, 40 years ago, mm -hmm even where, where, where I come from. People used to meet all together, right? We used to have that sense of community. Mm -hmm. And we don't have this nowadays. So we have a very um, lonely society. Mm -hmm. Therefore, people don't express their opinions. And if they do, they feel conditioned, mm -hmm. right? And that certainly is affecting our mental health and certainly affecting the way we see each other and the way we understand mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. I've noticed also there's been a lot more research actually on how your mental health can affect the physical, like some studies have shown the effect of stress and anxiety, how that can actually, or so they say, can increase the growth of tumours and cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Obviously blood pressure, you mentioned weight loss. Do you think now that the media and the mainstream are linking the actual physical response that mental health or lack of mental health can cause, people are showing more of an interest in the stigma? Absolutely, yes. And this is something that started in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. So there's been a huge uh, increase in research mm -hmm. uh, proving that the, the health of your mind it's uh, intimately related to the health of your body. Mm -hmm. So, and I put you an example here. So imagine someone that works 11 hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. And within this window of working so hard, uh, that person goes to the gym and eats really well, right? But at the same time, he or she is exposed to huge levels of stress, right? Mm -hmm. Our brains are not designed to hold on to that stress for so long, mm -hmm. right? Therefore, our resilience increased tremendously. Mm -hmm. What happens is that the brain is not able to recognize or differentiate between the real threat mm -hmm. and a psychological or an imaginary threat. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. So we, exactly, thanks, Martha. <laughs> so we are constantly walking around with our fight or flight response mm -hmm. constantly on, right? Mm -hmm. Releasing hormones such as cortisol, mm -hmm. adrenaline, noradrenaline. Mm -hmm. So 
the, the most recent research studies showing that mental health affects the physical health as well is, mm -hmm. for example, in diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things in, in the f constant activation of fight or flight response is that we release cortisol continuously and that is linked to diabetes type mm -hmm. 2. But when it comes to our generation and mental health, one of the elephants in the room that we have is social media and the impact that it has on us. Mm -hmm. And I think there's two aspects to it. The first being our interaction with others on the platform and also our interaction with ourselves internally and how we engage with the platform. So you can think about how fear of missing out, for example, is now a recognized psychological disorder because of that specifically. Yeah, that it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. suffering from FOMO. Yeah, and I'm serious. Sometimes it's better not to know, you know, what people are doing, right. than just actually yeah. know and it's like, oh, I did not participate in that, so yeah. what's going on? You know, there's something wrong about me. So, yeah. so that is, yeah, that's, that's an excellent point to I feel part of that community. You don't feel accepted. It's like, I'm not there, what's mm -hmm. going on? There's a good deeper than that. Yeah, it's it's deeper, deeper than not making it to the bar. It's just a feeling of not belonging. It there. affects your, yeah. your self esteem as well. I guess it kind of goes back to what we talked about previously, which is disconnected connectedness. Mm -hmm. But is there any way of using those platforms in a way that doesn't cause us? And for that's a really tricky question. Um, <laughs> that was a fast answer. <laughs> and um, personally as well, I've, I've recently been really, really aware, after reading a few books, mm -hmm. really aware of how I use social media and I've, I'm even considering deleting some platforms. <laughs> which one? Um, <laughs> the first one is Instagram. Yeah. It's the most, it's the most damaging. And I tell you eyes. what, I read this amazing book that it's 10 arguments um, to delete your social media straight away, mm -hmm. right? It's by this IT software engineer from the States. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, so I recommend you to all to read the book. So he talks about the very complex algorithms behind the structure of social media platforms, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so they were they were specifically designed to make us addicts. Mm -hmm. to make us release the same chemical, brain chemicals that dopamine. if you are dopamine, yeah, mm -hmm. that if you are actually on drugs and it's very scary. And myself, I, a, a brilliant example, I realized that in the last years, I've, you know, it's not only the fear of missing out, but it's also the fear of why I'm not like that, why I'm not mm -hmm. like this. Mm. And I've never been like this, mm. <laughs> honestly. So, and that really scares me a lot because then, um, and this is very personal, but I don't mind sharing this with you. Then I feel, you know, you know, what is wrong with me? You know, mm. I'm, and I'm pushing myself to exercise a lot, to do this, to become that. You know, and it's so tiring, right? Yeah. And that actually has to stop. And what we tend to see in social media, especially platforms such as Instagram, mm. is that. Um, faking of a perfect world constantly and that is exhausting for the mm -hmm. mind mm -hmm. because then you feel that you're the only one that are you know going through these nasty things in life and it's not but do you think that being aware that there's a lot of fake things happening on Instagram and that people are only showing the one percent of their life that they want to show mm -hmm. helps us to like not internalize it and see it as a everyone else's life is like this and mine is not why is that but it's it is much complex than that, right? It's not only one person, it's not only two, it's not your friends, mm -hmm. it's, it's deeper than that, mm -hmm. right? So when we go through the banner, you're constantly exposed mm -hmm. to beautiful faces, beautiful body, mm -hmm. nice landscape, mm -hmm. beautiful you know, lifestyle. So it's not one person and you can be fully aware that mm -hmm. you know, that's not reality, but deep inside our brains, how they're processing the information is not like this. It still affects you, you know, it doesn't matter if it's real or fake because you still see those beautiful, as you said, bodies and, and couples and, and landscapes and settings and restaurants and you know you don't have that. That person hasn't photoshopped the image, yeah, the fact that their life is not this 100% is slightly comforting, but they're still there now, they're still with their person now, mm -hmm. they're still at this restaurant now, Yeah, and that's jealousy provoking and that makes you feel lesser than and yeah. exactly like you said and we are perhaps we're capable and able to do this mm -hmm. but um imagine someone that does not have the same mm. personal characteristics right. as we have right. Right. people that it's not, it has nothing to do with weakness right mm -hmm. and that's not the word i want to use mm -hmm. but Imagine someone that is a little younger than us, right, that has not been exposed to what we've been exposed, mm -hmm. right? That person is going to be much more vulnerable mm -hmm. for them to mm -hmm. feel certain ways. Plus, it's like with time as well, like mm -hmm. when we were younger, 
every generation is different, but for us, there was what Facebook or Bebo, it wasn't the same as Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then the other end of the spectrum, you saw what celebrities were doing, right? but that was so far, like, it was so different, you're not expecting to be doing the same as Britney Spears. Yeah. But now the younger generations in particular, and to an extent ours, it's an overload of you're not just following your friends, you're not just following your favorite singers, mm -hmm. you're following a, a handful or a, probably a bigger than a handful of accounts yeah. Right. Yeah. and, and people you, you don't want, know. You just want to be like them, yeah. right? Because there are opportunities for us now mm -hmm. to be like them. Right. So it's a sense of uh, you relate to them. Right. But from the other side of it, from the perspective of that person, we talked about this in our previous episode actually, yeah. how yeah. people use Instagram as a way to brand themselves, in a sense, manifesting the lives that they want. Mm. But for the person doing that, doesn't it then cause you to be so involved in the life that you want that you're not taking care of the life that you have? And a lot of the techniques that you use to basically take care of your mental health, like grounding techniques, meditation are trying to prevent you from doing that and stop being in your own head and try and live in the moment but the fact that people are living in their phones prevents them from doing it. Absolutely. Is that not helpful totally. as well to the person? Yeah, 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 I agree. It's interesting and you know just mentioned celebrities and you know I kind of have to jump in and see where you stand in this so we talked about Instagram only promoting one side of the story but actually lately a number of celebrities you know like Kendall Jenner or Hailey Bieber have come out and talked about their struggles with mental health, be it anxiety, be it depression. And I'm thinking what this does to the mental health sufferer is helpful because you look at them, their perfect life in your head, and you think if they're suffering from that, um, you know, with this, you know, those people that encompass this idea of normalcy that society deems acceptable, then surely I, the mental health sufferer, thinks I'm not that abnormal for feeling that way. Totally. Do you agree? Or do you I think that it helps? Well, this is one of the positive uh, mm. things about social media platforms, mm -hmm. um, such as Instagram, for example. Right. And I'm so happy to say, you know, that there's a movement, there's yeah. a shift from the celebrities that not, you know, they don't really try anymore to be like this perfect person right. who is up here, right. is untouchable, is not really. Right. Um, personally, I, if, you know, if I can give an advice, um, there's a beautiful account. It's called I Wait. It's done by um, Jamila Jamil. Mm -hmm. okay. She's a, an actress, and it's, it's my favorite uh, movement of all the times. Yeah. And I wish one day I could meet her. Yeah. Um, so her platform shows what um, has been a taboo for so many years. Mm -hmm. For example, especially in women, why right? weight loss, weight gain. Um, cellulite and you know the way you wear bikinis so, or you know it's very simple things and her story is not different from mm. the story that I can have although you know you we guys can have, have yeah. exactly mm -hmm. but it's the beauty and how she presents the information mm -hmm. right what is it's so it's so important in, in, in this story right so that yeah, I can't interesting. Interesting yeah. yeah. I need to follow it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's fantastic. It's all. It's actually like you read what she says. You read what she posts. It's like, gosh, I feel so amazing because I'm wearing the, thing, the same thing, and I'm, you look the same way, and I'm you can like, relate. Yeah, you exactly. Can relate. And, and, and I'm different. Yeah. yeah, and you can relate yeah. to that celebrity or that persona. That it's like, well, it's you know, she or he also has two feet, you know, ten toes and two eyes, and the same things. Like the same mental yeah. health, right? Exactly. So taking it back to a more general perspective, we shared a very worrying statistic on Brain Thunder mm. earlier this week about how the millennial generation expects to see a 40% uptick in mortality due to declining physical and mental health if they don't take care of those things right now. So how would you advise someone to, to do that? Because we talk a lot about self-care and self-love, but what does that actually mean? Um, if you want me to be really, really honest. Yeah. <laughs> 